I've been a long time iPhone user, but I've often wondered what it would look like to switch to Android. One of the first things that comes to my mind is security. I wanted to know how security and privacy compare between iPhone and Android. The first place I started was taking a look at native messaging. On iPhone, there's two types of messaging, iMessage and SMS. iMessage works between iPhones and other Apple devices, and every message you send is end-to-end -end encrypted. iMessage may very well be one of the most secure online messaging platforms you can use, but what if the other person doesn't have an iPhone? In this case, your message is sent via SMS or short message service. For all you iPhone users, this is what happens when you get the green bubble in a text thread. SMS is one of the least secure methods of communicating privately with someone and it's not encrypted at all. And you're probably thinking, surely there's got to be a better way to securely send text messages between devices, right? And you'd be correct. It's called RCS, which is short for rich communication services. This is the new standard for texting that introduces modern features like end-to-end -end encryption, typing indicators, read receipts, and support for sending high-resolution photos. RCS has been live on Android for a while now, but Apple refuses to offer support for it on iOS. They're stuck on iMessage being the standard for sending messages back and forth between devices, even though they won't allow Android to implement any form of iMessage. Meanwhile, Google is offering RCS as an open standard that Apple can implement, but they won't do it. Apple CEO Tim Cook has made statements implying that he wants the messaging system to remain clunky between iPhone and Android because he wants everyone to just buy an iPhone. One time at a conference, someone was pressing Tim Cook on why he wouldn't implement RCS in iOS, stating that his mom owns an Android phone and he just wants to be able to communicate securely with her. And in response, Tim Cook said, buy your mom an iPhone. Buy her. your mom an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, this kind of stuck up, stubborn attitude from Apple makes me want to give the win to Android for secure messaging. Sure, iMessage is secure and I'm biased. I think it's a great communication platform, but the fact that Apple won't offer it to Android is really telling that they just want to get people to buy more iPhones. Meanwhile, Google's over there saying, hey, RCS is for everyone. Apple, you're welcome to implement it, but Apple refuses and I don't like that they're doing that. Now, obviously iPhone users could use alternative platforms like WhatsApp or Telegram to securely communicate with Android users, but that requires both sides to use a third-party platform, and that's not nearly as convenient as built-in messaging. When it comes to file security for data stored on your device, the iPhone automatically encrypts app data and prevents unauthorized access as long as you have a passcode, fingerprint, or face ID set up for your iPhone. All third-party iOS apps are sandboxed, and this prevents apps from accessing files from other apps or making changes to your device. This is one of the reasons we don't really see viruses on iOS because it would be incredibly difficult for something like that to happen. Now, nothing is 100% foolproof. There's always security holes in software. So it's not that iOS can never get a virus, but it's highly unlikely since each app operates in its own isolated container. Android phones are also encrypted by default and it's extremely rare to get viruses. There is a bigger security threat with Android because you're able to sideload apps and install them from places outside the Google Play Store, but the operating system still has things in place to mitigate the security risks. One of the biggest data protection benefits to iOS is Apple's app tracking transparency feature. This feature requires apps to request permission to track user activity and minimizes those creepy targeted ads that you get from all your internet connected devices. Now, in the latest version of iOS, apps are automatically denied the request to track unless you opt into the allow apps to request to track feature. So you have to go to your settings and turn on a feature in order for an app to ask you if it can track you. That's pretty savage. This feature does two things. First, it blocks apps from accessing your Apple device identifier. This is a random string of numbers and letters that is used to keep track of your device across different apps. So if an app doesn't have access to this identifier, it's a lot harder to track your activity between apps and share data with advertisers. The second thing it does is tell the developer that you wish to not be tracked, and then it's up to them to make a good faith effort not to do so. This is the thing that's a bit disappointing because there's not really a way that Apple can enforce this. You're just trusting that 
the developer is going to do the right thing, and I have a feeling many of them are tracking you anyway. But that's a lot more than you can say about Android. As of now, there's no built-in feature to request that an app doesn't track you. Google is working on a new Android privacy sandbox that looks similar to app tracking transparency, but they haven't implemented the feature yet, and they're being really loosey-goosey on when this is going to be implemented. They've kind of said, hey, here's this concept. We need the help of all the app developers to make it happen, and at some point in the future, we're going to implement it. I also remain skeptical of Google's commitment to implement privacy features in Android because Google is a data company. Advertising is their main business, so they need user data to target ads effectively in their free services like Gmail and Google Search. Apple's introduction of app tracking transparency legitimately hurt Facebook's advertising revenue. It's been down ever since they introduced the feature, and since Google makes money in a similar way to Facebook, I can't wrap my head around why Google would be incentivized to hurt their own ability to track user data. One thing you do want to track, whether you're on iOS or Android, is your passwords for your accounts. It's a terrible idea to use the same password for every account, but keeping track of a unique randomly generated password for each account can be a headache. That doesn't have to be the case with a password manager, and my personal favorite password manager is 1Password, the sponsor of today's video. 1Password gives you all the tools you need to secure your accounts, store passwords, credit card numbers, passport details, and other sensitive information. You can securely share your passwords with friends and family, and conveniently access your vault with Face ID or fingerprint unlock. And 1Password recently announced the ability to save and sign in with pass keys so you can eliminate the need for passwords entirely on websites that support it. I think I'm going to start migrating my accounts to pass keys. 1Password is offering 25% off for new users, so go to this link to get started. Thanks to 1Password for sponsoring today's video, and now I want to take a look at another security aspect to iOS versus Android. One thing to consider when it comes to data protection is what happens to your data in the event that your device is lost or stolen iOS and Android both have a feature where you can remotely request that your device be erased as soon as it comes online via Wi-Fi or cellular data. Apple and Google also both offer a device reactivation lock. This is something that discourages theft because if someone were to steal your device and factory reset it and list it on eBay, the device is going to be a useless brick unless you authorized it and signed out of your Google account or Apple ID before getting rid of the device. Many people buying used phones are also aware that you can check if a phone has an activation lock on it or not before you purchase it. So thieves realize that phones are not worth a whole lot used if they have an activation lock, and that's meaning they're just not stealing phones as much as they used to. So in all honesty, the privacy and security differences between iOS and Android are pretty minimal. Going into this video, I expected Apple to come out ahead because Apple is well known for its marketing around privacy and security for its devices. And to add to that, Google isn't exactly a shining example of data privacy. They like to collect user data for their advertising business. But at the end of the day, both iPhone and Android are going to do a great job at protecting your data. You have to decide whether you want Google having control of your data, and once again, they are an advertising company, so to me it seems like there's a bit of a conflict of interest there, or Apple having control of your data. And while they seem to have this commitment of privacy, their refusal to implement RCS in iOS makes it seem like maybe some of these privacy features are just just to dangle the carrot over your head to get you to buy one of their devices. Buy yeah. your mom an iPhone. <laughs> In other words, does Apple really care about everyone's privacy? Both companies have some reason to not be trusted when it comes to privacy, so I think it just boils down to personal preference. I've always enjoyed the Apple ecosystem, so that's where I'm at, and I personally prefer to not give Google even more of my data. But whether you choose iPhone or Android, you can secure your online accounts with one password. I would start exploring pass keys. It will significantly upgrade your account security on supported websites, and it's just another way to get ahead of the issue of account compromises.